Hey, what's up guys? Talon, I am back with another video. Uh, I got a test for you guys today. What we're going to do is we're going to hop into a uh, server here. Just do a first person solo match or third person, one of the two. Uh, we're going to hop in and we're going to do a test to see how much clock speed makes a difference um, in your FPS in PUBG. And we're going to do it all in real time. I have a program downloaded that allows me to cycle through the clock speeds uh, with just a couple hotkey switches. And then we have that overlaid up here for you so you guys will be able to see that. And then the FPS here. Not sure if you can see the Steam counter, but I do have it here as well, but it may not show up. But right now we are running 5 gigahertz, all 6 cores on the 8700K. 1.264 volts is what I'm actually uh, getting under load right now. It is set a little bit higher in the uh, BIOS. I think 1.275 or something like that um, is what I do have it set to. But with VDroop, I like to have it around 1.265 volts. So setting it there is um, with the load line calibration is what I typically get under load. So that's worked out pretty well for me, keeping it nice, stable, no crashes. Temperature is really low, as you guys can see. It is a Corsair H100i. Got the uh, CPU utilization, and it's a GTX 1080i down here. It is overclocked. It's an Asus Strix. Uh, overclock edition, but then I have it further overclocked um, to get a, a boost clock value of 2012 or 2025. I think it bounces around depending on temperature. Memory is stock on it, temperature, and the fan uh, GPU load, and my fan profile to get these low temps is just manual uh, fan speed set to 70%. And again, FPS is down here, so that explains all that for you guys if you don't understand what these overlays mean. Uh, the settings that I use for the game. Uh, I do have it set to like a competitive uh, setting here. It's full screen, 1440p, and then I like to use, uh, my settings I like to use, uh, just a custom setting, 100% uh, screen scale, so we're getting a true 1440p. Anti-aliasing, ultra settings, post-processing, I do medium. Shadows very low, or you're at a disadvantage. These also make a really big difference in your FPS. Textures. A lot of people, I don't understand this, they don't really understand that textures don't really affect your FPS. They affect the VRAM. All of the textures are loaded into the VRAM. So as long as you have a card that has a decent amount of VRAM, you can set these higher. If you only have like a two gigabyte card, you're probably not gonna be able to get away with that. You might be getting crashing. Um, but a four gigabyte or three gigabyte plus card, I don't see why you probably can't get away with using ultra settings. It's gonna give you a much better looking game and the FPS difference is negligible. There's like no FPS difference. So crank this to ultra or high. This Don't put this on low in any game. It doesn't matter. It doesn't utilize the GPU. It's utilizing the VRAM. Uh, effects are on medium. Uh, the foliage is very low. Again, you're at a pretty big disadvantage if you're running this on high. This also makes a large difference in FPS. And then view distance, I want on ultra. I think this does make a slight difference, but uh, I want to be able to see guys at a far distance. So make sure that's on ultra. Obviously, VSync and, and motion blur are off. It is a G-Sync 144 hertz display. So uh, VSync is off. Motion blur sucks. So nobody uses that. Let's go ahead and hop in. We'll do a solo. Let's just do a third person. And hopefully we don't die. My plan is just to get me into the game uh, somewhere semi-isolated, but populated enough. Um, I'm going to turn that down as soon as we load in here. Populated enough that it's not just some random uh, spawn point. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. 75% should work. Right now... This is where you really test it is when you're looking at everybody. So 140 frames a second, pretty much everybody's loaded in. So really good performance, obviously on the five gigahertz profile. Uh, they've really improved in version 1.0. They've really improved the performance. So you guys should be getting a lot better performance, even with a meteor over system, maybe like a, an i5 or um, an i3, something like a 1060. Not mediocre, but not like super high end. It's a, you know, that's a mid grade, really, Really good gaming system, but you know you're not spending the huge inflated price for like a 1080 or an i7 or something like that. And for most gamers, they probably wouldn't even need that. So looks like we're coming in here. Chinky's usually uh, really populated, but it's it's a hot point that a lot of people like to go to. If I land there, I doubt I'm going to be able to create this test. So landing there's just kind of out right now. I might go up towards like Stalber 
or something like that. Okay. One of these areas here. I sure I guess they're going to be higher, but if I land here, I, I have to focus on just fighting, and I can't really focus on doing this task. So maybe I'll land out like side of. Nah, I'm just going to land somewhere like this. Honestly, I want to. I want to be able to complete the test, and then I'll run to a more populated area. So let's just fall in one of these random buildings. Most likely, someone's not going to pick this building. Maybe. So, if it's at 144 FPS, which it was just just bouncing off that, there is a frame limiter. Just so anybody who's watching that don't understand, you're only getting 100. Now, there's a frame limiter, so we could potentially be getting up to 200 frames a second. The problem is, is that I'm limited right now, so I can't, I can't do a, a real test to see. Um, just how limited we are. If you watch some of the videos on like uh, the uh, hardware on Box, for example, they just did a video that shows the uh, Ryzen CPUs not even getting 144 uh, FPS as a maximum. So they're not even hitting the maximum. So they could be so far behind the Intel chips, they're not even able to achieve that maximum where the Intel chips are being limited. So if they were to unlock this, I think we'd really see even farther just kind of how far be behind the uh, the Ryzen CPUs are um, in terms of this game and in their performance. I don't know if I, did I land down here. I did land down here, right? Let's just get a gun um, and then we're going to do a quick test. And as soon as the test's done, I'm going to end the video. I have no plans to completely play this out for you guys. Just in case that that rogue player comes along and decides to shoot me while I'm trying to do a benchmark. You can see though, 140 frames a second, 144 there, so it kind of bounced off the limiter. There we go. Alright, so we have that, that, that. Really good performance though. They've really uh, made this significantly better. Full auto on the AK. I don't even know why I'm picking this up. We're not going to need it. Alright. We're out here. Got a gun. Let's go somewhere we're bouncing. So right now, 144 frames per second. That's what we're sitting at. Uh, we'll go to third person. Same thing. So 144 frames a second. So now let's use a hotkey. And I think I did it kind of in increments of 300 megahertz. So a lot of BIOS manufacturers are shipping with that MCE or multi-core enhancement being turned on. So you're getting 4.7 gigahertz out of the box on a lot of these chips. So a lot of people are coming home, and that's that's what they're getting when they put their system together, and they don't really know any better. So I figured that's a pretty good start point. Let's do 5 gigahertz from kind of the upper tier of an overclock, maybe 5.1, 5.2 if you get really lucky with your chip. Or if you want to get crazy. Um, and then we're just going to cycle down. I think it starts at 3. Okay. It doesn't. That's the wrong key. There's 4.7. So you guys can see right there in the top left corner, we've changed to 4.7. Still 144 frames per second. Not making a difference right now. Now, it could make a difference in your minimums. I'm not saying that's not going to make a difference in your minimums. You can see we're holding perfectly at 4 points, or 144 frames a second with no issue. So we'll go ahead and we'll come down to 4. Point, I think it went, I went to 4.3 to simulate an 8700 non-K CPU. That's its max turbo, obviously without a B-clock overclock. Uh, we'll go to 4.3. 144 frames a second. No issue. And now you can see that we could play this game at just 4.3 and get pretty much near identical performance. And we'd be able to run at a much lower voltage, probably... I would say at 4.3, I could probably run this thing under a volt. 
because that's such a low clock. I was able to boot into Windows at 1.2 volts, 5 gigahertz. So I think I could get under a volt with 4.3, and I would have temperatures in the 20s. It would just be insane, probably. And you can see the temperatures are already dropping them down into the, the 40s and 30s on some of these cores. I mean, just stupid low. And then I put, I think, 4 gigahertz. Just, hey, if you have a 4 gigahertz chip, I don't know why you'd have that, but drop it down to 4 gigahertz. And there's 4 gigahertz. 144 frames a second. Not a single fucking difference in performance. Absolutely insane. I never thought that... Now, we are on the limiter here, so there could be a huge difference in performance. If we could remove that limit, I'd be able to actually test this for you very, very clearly, but as you guys can see, I'm running around at 4 gigahertz now. All cores. And, uh... I'm still maxed out on FPS. This, is, this could be different. We go into a city. Uh, we'll do one more quick test. Let's go look at something a little bit more populated. We'll keep it at 4 gigahertz, and we're going to step it. We'll step back up to 5 gigahertz slowly. Really good performance, so I'm not feeling any stuttering. I wouldn't notice the difference if I were playing this between... 5 and 4 gigahertz at all. There's it, it, there's no perceivable difference here in performance. Feels the exact same. Now, temperatures aren't changing as much as they would be if uh, I didn't have the fixed voltage running through it at 1.264.45 volts. Um, now, if those if we weren't running, let's see, is this, is this a little more populated? So if I look over here... Is that a little bit better? Why are we still stuck at 144? This chip is too damn good. I'll tell you what. I have a better idea. We're going to go to Ultra Settings. Maybe Ultra will make a difference here. So let's just do Ultra across the board. Ultra. Boom. Alright. Now we have a difference, right? We're finally getting somewhat limited here. Alright, so we'll just kind of stare here. 4 gigahertz, 104 frames a second. Now we're going to go to 4.3. There's 4.3. 104 frames per second. Zero difference. Let's go to 4.7. Zero frames difference. 103, 104 frames per second. No difference. Let's go up to 5 gigahertz. Nothing. 104 frames a second. You gotta be kidding me. 104 frames a second. We're getting no difference right now. I slightly moved my mouse so the FPS may be slightly different. It's back down to 104. There it is. 106. Okay, so there's 106 frames. And let's do a quick jump to 4 gigahertz. Nothing. Nothing. Zero difference. A full gigahertz difference in this game now. And I'm getting no change at all. The performance is exactly the same. So, I'm actually really surprised by that. Uh, maybe, I mean, you would see the difference if I were to lower the settings back down and remove that frame cap. But, as you guys can see... It made no difference. The 8700K, no matter what clock speed I just threw it, it made zero difference. Now, the difference may be there if I were to run into a town and we may see difference in the, the highs and lows. I guess that's another video I need to put out for you guys. I'm going to make a video for you guys testing um, the average, the 1% and the 0.1% lows to actually see if we're getting any sort of real difference here. But right now... I'm not seeing any difference. Uh, so if you guys are really crying, if there's guys out there like, oh man, my chip will only do 4.8 gigahertz or 4.7. I can't get it to that that 5 gigahertz benchmark. Uh, I don't think you have much to fret, at least in PUBG or really any game. The difference is not going to be there. It's just not worth worrying about and throwing the crazy volts at your CPU to get it. It's more of just a bragging right. Oh, I can do 5 gigahertz on my chip. So I hope this helps some of you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.